every antivirus and EDR claims that they can detect advanced threats. But can they actually? Here, we have something I have coined as Windows 11 Evasion Simulation Toolkit. WEST for short, you could say. So this toolkit basically runs a bunch of Windows 11 uh, EDR, AV, evasion techniques, mainly used with like a lot more EDRs and AVs. But the most common AV and EDR evasion techniques for telemetry purposes. So this is all just simulating attacks. Everything is in a controlled environment, disclaimer, and this is just for telemetry purposes for testing. So this has come with 10 different um, AV slash EDR evasion scenarios listed in a menu. It can simulate lull bins, fireless PowerShell execution, API pattern ossification, things of that nature, some common evasion techniques. And I have it print out a log file so you can see process execution and uh, things like that for learning purposes. Now for this, it added an option to enable optional logging, script block logging, and ensure Sysmon is installed and configured. Now I have made the mistake before in one of my previous videos thinking that Sysmon just came with Windows, but it does not. So I made sure ChatGPT had a script in here to enable Sysmon. And this Sysmon comes with a community configuration from Swift on Security for richer telemetry. So uses Swift on Security configuration for that, just not the base config. So you pick a number from the menu and it launches a safe version of that attack. So for example, number one, just fileless PowerShell execution. It executes it in memory. So the AV and EDR have a harder time detecting it. And it runs it with the invoke expression. And then we have lull bins, obviously. So that was just an example of some of the ossification techniques, evasion techniques, and uh, what some of these menu items do. So for this demo, we are going over menu items four and five. Four obfuscated files or information. Adversaries may attempt to make an executable or file difficult to discover or analyze by encrypting, encoding, or otherwise obfuscating its contents on the system or in transit. Used across different platforms and the network to evade defenses. Those portions of files can also be encoded to hide the plain text strings that would otherwise help defenders with discovery. Payloads may also be split into separate seemingly benign files that only reveal malicious functionality when reassembled. And here are some examples of this actually used in the wild. So hackers actually do use these techniques that I'm about to show you. So let's go over it. So we're on the menu. We're clicking number four, encoded payload. Select an option number four and then run it. And it popped up the PowerShell window and Boom. So as you can see, it opened the PowerShell window. It may not look like much. As you can see, running PowerShell encoded command, base64. So we have our logs. And as you can see, we have encoded command length 104, encoded PowerShell with dash encoded command. So it literally just opens PowerShell, but the command is encoded in base64, which not as exciting as some commands you can encode, but it's for safe demo purposes. Next one we are gonna do is number five, which is parent slash PPID masquerading. So let's run it and see what it does. Which, notepads opened, so malicious. But as you can see, the PowerShell window also popped open. So as you can see, complete hunt for unexpected parent-child proximity. So from context clues, 
it basically opens a process within a process, parent-child. So we can see the log here, Sim 5, parent-child masquerading, started notepad, PID 10268, and then it started PowerShell, PID 4592, after notepad, PID 10268. So the malicious code kind of nests under the safe code, if you will, um, just kind of like obfuscating it that way. Which for all of these, you can obviously make these a lot more malicious. For example, with number five, parent slash PPID masquerading, you could have a PowerShell command in there that gets, let's say, malicious script or something uh, from the internet, let's say GitHub, and then proceed to run that on the person's machine. And then encoded payload, you can just encode literally like any payload, which I also have done a video previously about this with XORing some code and then bypassing Windows AV. If you want to look at that, I'll put it in the description up here, wherever an actual demo did occur. So if you want to check that one out, it'll be in the description and somewhere up here, probably. Yeah, all of this is basically just simulation and testing pretty much uh, Atomic Red Team, if you know what that is. Pretty similar to Atomic Red Team. I didn't code this at all. I came up with the ideas. Um, ChatGPT executed these ideas. And I had to do very specific prompting to have ChatGPT code this. So I don't know if it works with like regular prompting, but you really have to word your prompt in a good way to have ChatGPT um, generate a Windows 11 evasion simulation toolkit. So just an FYI. So that is it for this video. Hope you guys got something out of it, learned something, had some fun. Try and get ChatGPT to generate a version of this for your own testing and try some stuff out. I may put it on GitHub depending on the demand. Otherwise, just generate it. But yeah, some pretty cool evasion techniques. So with that out of the way, make sure to like, subscribe, punch all the buttons in the face, and I will see you in the next video.